Hi. Howdy. I miss you. I feel like I haven't seen you in so long. I know. It's been forever. How's your new job looking? It's good. It's like very male dominated. Uh oh. Yeah, like there's only like two girls in like the engineering part. And I'm like, yeah. Cool. Fun. That makes sense, I guess. But it'll be a good opportunity. Like, yeah, that'll be awesome. Uh, okay, so um, the only thing we're doing different for this workshop is I'm giving a few things away at the end. Oh, okay. Um, and so at the very end, like after both of them have spoken and both the questions have been answered, um, we're gonna, I have like a little spinny wheel thing that I'm gonna use the drawing, like the name, attendance names on. Mm -hmm. And then they're going to, I'm just going to hit three of them and then be like, I'll email you after. And that will be it. Okay. Um, so that's the only thing that's different. We went like five minutes over in the last one, but I'm not too worried about it this time because we have a giveaway. So they'll stay. Yeah. Um, um, will you send me then, the link to the attendance so I can like oh, send yes, it? Oh, yes. Absolutely. I'll text it to you right now. Okay, right, perfect. And then we'll wait just a minute longer. Um, oh yeah, it's not even six yet. So we'll wait and then at six, we'll see how many people are on. And then we might maybe right at six, just let Emily Hudson and Jenny Tanner in. Okay. So that they can get set up and then we'll see how many people are in the waiting room at that point. Sounds good. Okay, so perfect. Read my mind. Mm -hmm. Got it. Hi, ladies. See, that wasn't so bad. That's because yeah. they were children. <laughs> it's going to be great. I'm so excited because the mentees are stellar and especially the ones who regularly come to these workshops um they're just amazing all around so they're gonna be a lot of fun and they're really gonna we're just gonna love it so it'll be awesome and i'm seeing a lot of new girls who haven't come in a while so i'm glad that they're that they're here as well so i told my mentees i'm like i support you all the time you need to get on and support me now <laughs> yes, exactly. See, that's why I'm asking the mentors to do it because I know they'll get their mentees to come. Yeah. Um, I know. I always text the the college age mentors too, and I'm like, okay, besties, make sure that your girls are here. This is the time. Like, be a leader, be a good example. So, uh, yeah. it's gonna be great. 
Um, we're going to do a giveaway at the end as well. Um, and we'll probably do it just as fast, but don't feel like you have to stay for that. If it, if it goes over and you have a hard stop at seven, don't worry about staying, but um yeah we are Ellery let's oh by the way this is Ellery this is my women who succeed Hi. Hi. Ellery, Emily and Jenny she's, she's your awesome. what hmm? she's your what my intern um, oh, where, do, where do you go to school I go to the University of Utah and what's your major data science that's McKenna Rogers yeah to Utah State and her that's what hers is as well and She's graduating this year and she's already been accepted and is starting graduate school and has a job at General Mills. Wow. Ooh. Yes. General Mills has a really good relationship with Utah State. They, were, they? <laughs> they, they tried to get a lot of the people I graduated with in business school to go to General Mills and they hyped it up so much. It sounded so fun. Yeah. She's like freaky organized. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I had, in fact, I had to count on her to keep me in line. There you go. She is, and she's one of our mentors too for our younger yeah. girls. She is, she is solid. But all right, Ellery, let's let them in now, and I can share the screen with the announcement slides on them. If you want to do the chat with the links. Hello, everyone. Let's see, how do I, oh, here we go. Hi everyone, welcome. Thanks for being here. So good to see you all. I feel like I haven't seen some of you in forever. So I'm excited that you're here. I know it's because of the giveaway, but I'm gonna pretend it's because you missed me. So I'm glad you're all here and on time. This is great. So um, if you, we will put it in the chat in just a second, but you can fill out the attendance form link and just your first, first and last name, please. Cause a few of you have the same first names. And so I wanna make sure that everyone that's here gets the right amount of credit. Um, and I'm gonna be using those who fill out the attendance form to, um, enter, to enter those names in for the drawing at the end. So we're gonna do like a giveaway. And let's see here. I can put the first wave of that link in. Oh, whoops. Boop, there you go. Okay, there's your attendance form uh, that you can use if you can't use the QR code, but awesome. All right, and then you're gonna keep seeing that attendance form come up just because every time a new person comes in, they don't see the previous chat, so they need the attendance form link. Only fill it out one time, you're good, um, but it might come up a few times in the chat. Anyway, let's jump into it because we have a lot of really exciting stuff going on. Um, just so you're all aware, like I said in the email, this is the last time that we are having a workshop where you can get your name entered into the drawing for the thousand dollar scholarship. Um, so I'm going to pick that winner tonight, but the winner of that drawing will be notified via email tomorrow morning. And then they're going to be the only ones that get an email. So don't be looking for an email saying if you got it or not, if you did get the, if you did get the scholarship, you will get an email about it. If not, you won't hear anything. Um, so keep that in mind. But uh, every time that you visited, that you've come to a workshop and filled out that attendance form, you've gotten a name in the drawing. So hopefully you've kind of come a few times. Um, and then the only other announcement that I have for you is that our mentorship program wrap up celebration is on May 24th. So it's essentially like a, a bonus workshop, but it's gonna be different because we're gonna have a bunch of mentees speaking, some mentors speaking, all of the Women Who Succeed team is gonna speak. Um, and they're just gonna be short. It's gonna be an hour still, but um, it's gonna be super fun. We're gonna have like a slideshow, end of your video with all of our cute pictures. And of course I'm doing a giveaway. We're gonna have some, some extra prizes and stuff to give away at the end too. 
So if you want to RSVP to that, here is the QR code for that. And then it is in the chat as well, RSVP to the wrap up celebration. You can use that link in order to uh, sign up, put that on your calendar so you get a reminder for it. I'm definitely going to remind you more than once about it because I want all of you to come. But uh, if you RSVP, it's really helpful for us to know how many people to expect to be there. So please do that as well. Okay, we have so many exciting things coming up, and that includes two amazing speakers that we have. They spoke to our junior mentees uh, just a little while ago, and they did amazing, so I'm really excited for all of you to be here to listen to them as well. Um, so let's, we're going to take our group photo that we always take, so start turning your cameras on so that we can take that and then get started. I'll stop sharing my screen here. And we have two pages worth of people coming, which is so exciting. We haven't had that in a minute because I know you guys are crazy busy all the time, but okay, let's see here. <laughs> cool. All right, everyone ready? Everyone have their camera on that can have their camera on? Yay. Okay, ready? Smile. One, two, three. So cute. I'm gonna take another one just in case. Oh, love it. Oh, it's so good to see you. Okay, thank you again. So great to see you. So glad you're here. This is our last workshop of the year, which is so sad. Um, but hopefully some of you have reapplied to join us next year and that you'll be at the wrap-up celebration, which is basically a workshop in itself. So make sure that's on your calendars as well. For our college girls, you should be done with, with work. I mean, with school by then. So hopefully we see you uh, for that. And yeah, anyway. I am going to jump right into it. We have two amazing speakers today. Like I said, both of them are mentors for women who succeed. And so hopefully their mentees are here today. But um, we are going to have Emily Hudson speak first. So I'm going to go ahead and introduce her. And then Emily, I'll just turn it right over to you. Um, okay. So Emily Hudson is a business instructor at Bridgerland Technical College in Logan, Utah, where she received the Outstanding Achievement and Teaching Award. She loves working with her students and seeing the positive changes that education makes in people's lives. With a love for learning, she earned her MBA in accounting degrees and continues to explore opportunities for growth. She's a mentor for women who succeed and was inducted into the National Society of Leadership Success. As a mental health and suicide prevention advocate, she has presented webinars with Paradigm Education in the United States and Canada to support students and faculty. She serves on the Northern Box Elder County Suicide Prevention Solution and has spoken in the community about the importance of emotional resilience. Emily and her husband, Kirk, are parents to three boys that are the light of her life. And with that, Emily, I will turn it over to you. All right. Well, I am super excited to be here, and this time I remembered to take myself off mute before I got in there, so that's always good, right? We're off to a good start. So I really hope that, that you are all just coming off of a really great year with your mentors and that you've learned a lot and that you're just like that you've had opportunities to set some goals and to do different things this year. And I just, I have really loved my opportunity to be a mentor and I've learned a lot from my mentees and I think your mentors feel the same for you. So sending love from all of the mentors out there because I think you all are just amazing mentees. So um, Really quick to get started today, I want you to just kind of visualize something for me while we're talking. So I want you to visualize that you are at the beginning of a path and you are getting ready to go on a hike and you know exactly where you want to go and you know how you're going to get there. And as you start walking, um, you might hit some obstacles or, you know, fall down or come across some things that you weren't expecting, but you just keep going and you keep plugging, plugging away, keep walking forward. 
And then, you know, you see a stream off to the side and some beautiful flowers. And so you take a moment and you just go and relax and sit and just enjoy the calmness and enjoy the moment. And after a little while, you get back up and you keep going. And you see that there's another path there that you never expected to be there. It wasn't on a map. It wasn't anything that that you even knew about, but you wouldn't have known about it had you not started on the path in the first place. And as you look at where you thought you were going to go, um, you realize, well, that's that's a good path, but I really, I really like this other path. It looks like a really great path, and I think I'm going to take that one instead. And so you start walking down that path, and you come to some really huge obstacles or challenges or different things that you're like having to climb over stuff or, you know, walk around. And when you get to the top, you see just this beautiful view. And, but then you also take a moment and you look at yourself and you say, wow, I am stronger than I was when I started on this path. Physically, mentally, emotionally, I've overcome some challenges and I am a better person now. And I am a better version of myself than I was when I first started. And so I want you to think about that as as we kind of go through um, some different different things that may happen as you you look at your goals. You're going to come to times um, with your goals where you need to push forward, where you have to really dig deep. And there's going to be times where you have to pivot and change um, where you're heading or what's going on and other times where you have to put them aside for a while. And um, so we're just going to go through a few things, talk about them. So this is the top line is what I thought life after high school was going to be like. I was graduating. I was going to go to school. I had a full tuition scholarship and I was going to become um, an elementary school special education teacher. That was my goal. I knew that's what I was going to do. Nothing was going to stop me full steam ahead. And I got to my first semester at college and my degree changed. I was listening to my roommates talk and I realized they were talking about business And I thought those classes sound so fascinating to me. And so I switched my major and I went one more semester and I got married. And then I went one more year and I had, I was taking a business class and I was brainstorming some different business ideas. And I decided that I wanted to start my own business and I had a business plan. I knew what I wanted to do. And so I started going to all kinds of banks and they're like, you are 20 years old. You don't have a lot of assets to your name. Um, We are not going to loan you money. And I just thought, I really want to do this. And so I finally found a bank that would give me a chance. And so I started, um, it was a wedding consulting and decorating business down in St. George. And I built that business up and it, it was very successful. We were super, super busy. And um, two months before my oldest son was born, I sold the business because I wanted to focus more on my family. And so I did that for quite a while. I really enjoyed that. And that's, you know, that was the choice I made. It's not always a choice that anyone else needs to make, but it was just something that I wanted to do for me. So I, I put my education, I put my career, everything on hold for a while. And then um, as my kids got a little bit older, I decided this was my time. I was going to go back to school. And it took me 17 years from the time that I started out at point A until I reached point B. And my point A was, I'm going to be an elementary teacher. And my point B was, I'm an accountant. So totally, totally different from beginning to end. But I would not change any of that. (laughs) Um, 
you learn as you go along. And the things that I learned and that changed me and helped me realize what I enjoyed, they helped shape that path for me. And so don't get discouraged if your A to B does not look like what you thought it would look like. Um, and sometimes in life, you have to just push forward. And whether that is pushing forward in a really hard class you're taking, whether it's um, pushing forward in a goal that you have, whether it's um, just digging really deep when something happens. Um, sometimes we hit a point where we just have to push forward. And um, one of those times in my life that um, was a huge push forward moment for me um, was in May and April of 2020. So I teach accounting and business up in Logan, and um, we had two days to get all of our students online and be ready to work from home when COVID happened. At the same time, I had three, I have three sons that were going to three different schools, and I had 13 teachers that were all reaching out to me, trying to communicate with how to get my sons online and doing school at home. And I was also a student in the last two months of my master's degree. So I got the education craziness from every angle during 2020. And I knew that I needed to get my master's done. I wanted to get it done for my job. I wanted to get it done for my family. And so that was my why. I had to really dig down and look at why I was doing what I was doing, even though it was really hard to finish at that point. Um, and so I had to really rally, my family had to rally around and um, help me as we set goals as a family. And my boys had to go downstairs and be really quiet sometimes so that I could get some homework done. And I worked insane hours trying to keep up with my students and my boys' school and my school. And, um, but it, it worked as a family to do that together. Um, and having an accountability partner, a mentor, anyone that you can call and say, hey, there, I had a mentor at the time that I called many times and I was just like, this is too much. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to make it through school. And he would just say, well, you know, it is a lot. You do have a lot on your plate. And I really look forward to seeing your assignment come in tonight. So, and I would just get it done. And, um, and so sometimes just having someone that, that knows that that is a goal that you have and that is just there to help push you along and help you when you get to that point where you're just like, I just don't think I can do it anymore. Um, having somebody that you can reach out to and say, I, I need some help. Um, but also know that the obstacles are going to happen in any goal that you set. You will, you will find times where you run into something that, that is big and you just have to find a way to work around it. Um, and one of the ways is to just stay positive, find a way to figure out, um, what is positive in the situation instead of focusing on you know, what you can't do or how hard something is, focus on the things that are going well. Um, whether it's focusing on, I got one assignment done today. I wanted to get two done, but I got one done today. And I'm going to focus on the fact that I got one done today. And so um, just staying focused on the positive. Um, there are also times in your life where you're going to have to pivot or put a goal aside for a little while. Um, those pivot points, um, they might come because you want them, you know, like you're looking for a change or you're looking for something different. So, um, then you might change, have a pivot point because of that. Um, it may be that your interests change or, you know, your goals, your like your dreams, I guess it changed. So then it changes your goals a little bit. Um, Cause if you think about what you liked when you were five years old and what you did for fun and what you enjoyed doing with your friends and 
the difference between that and what you enjoy now, it's going to be that way your whole life as you learn and grow and have new experiences and try new things, you will find pathways that you didn't even know existed before. And so as those come up, it's a great time to to reevaluate your goals and see if they're really serving you and if they're really helping you um, get to where you want to be or if you need to change them a little bit and go a different way. Um, Other times those pivot points will come when and you don't have any control over it, that you don't have, you don't want there to be a pivot point. And that may come through a a change in family. It may come because of different health issues. I have a good friend that she was in nursing school and she just knew her whole life that that is what she wanted to do. She wanted to be a nurse. And then she ended up having some back problems. Because of that, that like stopped her path. Like she could not go any further on that path. And so instead of just, you know, going, well, now I don't know what to do. She had to really dig. She had to really like push through the bushes and figure it out and find a new path. And sometimes that is going to happen in life where you get an unexpected stop on your path that you just can't go further on it anymore. And, um, and that you have to pivot and it's okay. It's okay to have those times. It's okay to be frustrated during those times or to be sad, um, but to pivot and just try a new way, try a new path. Um, Another thing is putting them aside. Sometimes you, for me, putting my goals aside was for when I had kids, I wanted to do that. Um, Other times I've had to put it aside, like as I dealt with um, sickness in some family members, things like that, that it's just putting them aside for a little while, focusing on what needs to be done right then, focusing on that, and then choosing to pick those goals back up and move forward. And so by setting them aside, it doesn't mean that you have to leave them there. You can always pick them back up. You can always move forward. Um, But sometimes timing isn't the best thing. And you have to like look at yourself and look at your circumstances and and consider the time. Um, But if this is the only thing that you can take away from what I talked to you about tonight, this is something I want you to always remember that goals are used to get you where you want to be, but not to define who you are. Um, reaching or not reaching a goal doesn't change your value. It doesn't change who you are. It um, you have value. You have great abilities. Um, There are things that you are going to do in your life that no one else can do except you. There are going to be people that you impact that will not be able, that would not have that impact from anyone but you. You are important. And the things that you do and the goals that you set are fantastic. But if you come across a time where you fail a class, or you don't reach the goal that you wanted to reach, it doesn't mean that you are less. It just means that the tool that you are using to get there, it just didn't work and that you need to pick up something else and try again or pick that same thing up and keep trying. But it doesn't mean that you as a person are any less. You are amazing. You are phenomenal. You are going to do great things in your lives. And as you continue to just set goals and just try, just use goals as a tool, use them to get to where you want to be, but do not ever let them define who you are. Oh, I am so glad I got to talk with you guys tonight. And I hope that that helped. And does anybody have any questions or anything for me? Nope, nope, sorry. I have a question. Okay. 
Um, when you said you have to go in that path or change the path, um, I guess it depends on what you're doing, but when do you decide that it's not the right path for you? Um, for, I can speak for myself when I realized it wasn't the right path. Sometimes, sometimes things that have made me change my path are, um, my, my desires have changed. The things that I have learned have made me realize that the path I was on isn't really what I want to do anymore. Um, other things that can help you realize that is if the cost of your goal is going to like, not the, not the monetary cost, but if that goal is going to not have as many benefits as it has drawbacks, then that's another time to look at. Um, let me think. And I think too, if it just, if it doesn't, if it doesn't excite you to wake up in the morning and try to push towards that goal, um, maybe analyzing if it's, if it's just that you're in a challenge or um, if it's something that, that maybe you do need to, to look at and really ponder on and see if, see if a different path is better. So does that help? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, no problem. Are there any other questions? Awesome. Well, like I always tell you, you are always welcome to find our speakers on LinkedIn. If you do have any follow-up questions or anything, um, I know both of them would would definitely not mind you reaching out to to connect with them anyway. So um, thank you, Emily, so much for that awesome start to our workshop. That was so, so great. Uh, I'm just so excited for you to witness both of these amazing speakers. Um, and I'm glad you're all here again. So we are going to jump right into the second uh, our second speaker really quick though, because I know a few people came in a little bit late. I'm going to put the attendance form in the chat again, just in case. Um, <clears throat> but we are going to have our second speaker now, Jenny Tanner, and she is going to take us home with the rest of our workshop. So um, by way of introduction for Jenny, um, I have a little bio for her and then I will, I will turn it over to you. So uh, after being a flight attendant and working for Mobile Oil in Atlanta for 10 years, Jenny began working with her father and brother in 1995, and together they opened Tanner Glass and Hardware in, two, in the year 2000. The sales and installation of glass and res, residential hardware, as well as commercial glazing projects, are the primary focus of the company and has received several awards for excellence in customer service and philanthropy with their generosity to donate to shelters, Habitat for Humanity, and other local causes. Jenny participates in industry groups, sits on a board for homemade, and is a mem member of several home builders associations across the Wasatch Front. She attended the University of Utah and is a graduate of the Goldman Sachs 10,000 Small Business Program. Jenny is vice president of the Professional Women in Building and served as a labor organizer for the house that she built, a home that was built by women, which is the first in the nation, and will donate scholarships to young women wanting to earn enter the construction industry. She's married and has two daughters. They all love hiking and boating, and the family spends a lot of the summer months at their property in Star Valley, Wyoming. Jenny is an avid traveler and has been around the world. She considers it a great education, but her favorite place is Yellowstone. So Jenny, without further ado, take it away. Thank you, Sydney. I need to get you a new bio. It's a little bit old. Um, but thank you. And it's pretty hard to go behind Emily. What Emily, that was a really great talk. And I really learned a lot about you and your tenacity. And so thank you for leading this to make me look bad in the second phase of it. <laughs> uh, hi, everybody. I'm Jenny Tanner. And this is actually my second year in the Women Who Succeed program. I'm very excited for tonight. The topic is new beginnings, looking ahead to your future. I think it's ironic that I've been tasked with this theme of looking ahead 
because I never thought about what I wanted to do when I was growing up. My parents both worked long hours just to make ends meet and make sure my brother and I had food on the table and a roof over our heads. And I honestly, I, I don't remember ever sitting down with my parents at a dinner table or a breakfast table or a lunch table or anywhere and talking about college. I, I'm old. Uh, I graduated high school in 1980. So that tells you that I'm 60 years old. I had three jobs when I was a senior in high school. And to be honest, all I could see in front of me was work. My parents worked. Um, my brother was four years younger than me. And I just learned that what you do is you go out and you work. So college really wasn't a choice for me. And I think if I would have wanted to go, I'm sure my parents would have supported me, but I didn't, I, I just didn't have push from family to do that. So when I graduated from high school, I was pretty clueless on what I wanted to do. <clears throat> I started out as a bank teller, uh, went to a thrift and loan. I just sort of moved around because I, I was, I was lost and I just didn't want, know what I really wanted to do. And I like to party. I partied a lot. So it definitely got, got in the way of me uh, looking forward to a career or an education. Um, but when I was 23, I moved to LA with a good friend and I lived there for a year. I did not like it. It was not my vibe. And so I moved back to Salt Lake City and moved back in with my parents and boy, do I hear about it all the time on how many times I've moved back home. So <laughs> I was that child that has the family Bible. I don't know if any of you have a family Bible of all the things that you've done wrong, but I have a family Bible. So I moved back home and I got a job at KSL and I was still kind of bored. I was working in the newsroom, which was kind of exciting um, but I decided that I'd register and I'd go back up to the U and I would start getting an education. And I worked at KSL for two years, but I only went up to the U for one year because this great opportunity came along that was going to change my life and I was going to do this forever. And it was applying to be a flight attendant for Delta Airlines. And I did that and I got the job and I was transferred immediately to Atlanta, which meant that I had to drop out of school and quit my job. And um, when I lived in Atlanta, it was great. It was fun. I loved it for the first little while. But then after a while, I guess in my brain, I kept thinking, well, this is this is good. This is fine until I find a husband and then I can have a family but never once in the thought process of what my future looked like when I was doing this job was, is this my career? And is this what brings me joy? And is this what I'm going to do for the rest of my life? And I always just was thinking that it was a stepping stone to getting married, having a family and whatever. So when I realized that I didn't like being a flight attendant, I started, I, I quit and started kind of job hopping and pivoting. I guess job hopping is the, pivoting is the new phrase for job hopping. Um, and so I went from a few different jobs. I worked at Mobile Oil. I was a, bro a real estate broker and I just wasn't happy. So after living in Atlanta for 10 years, I decided I was going to move home. So there's notch number two in the Bible. Jenny moves home again and at 33 years old and moves in with her parents. And I, and my dad uh, said, Hey, you know what? You can come work for my construction company. You've got this really outgoing personality. You can be in sales and you can sell doorknobs all day long. And so I did. <clears throat> I started working for my dad in 1995 and I feel like it was meant to be because my my husband actually worked for my father before I did. So I met my husband the first day that I went to work for my dad. And fast forward five years, um, I'm married and I have a three-month-old baby. And my dad shut down his construction company. And my brother and my husband and my dad and I started Tanner Glass and Hardware as a family-run business. 
And let me just tell you something. Family run businesses are very, very difficult to navigate and to manage. I don't know if any of you have families that have family owned or families that work together in family owned businesses, but it's hard. It's really hard. However, you know, we really wanted this business to succeed. And so we made a lot of sacrifices with our egos and just to make sure that the company moved forward and that we were successful, but again, but it was hard. And so we worked together for 11 years um, and then my brother died. And my dad said, I'm done. I don't wanna do this anymore. It was too painful for him. And so he retired and he left me to manage a growing and successful business in the middle of a recession. And wow, it was really tough. I didn't know how to run a business. I didn't know anything about financials. And so I consider myself to be a, an accidental entrepreneur. I didn't create an idea to start the business or come up with an idea for a new product. But I took over and I worked hard to make it big, bigger and more profitable. And today, Tanner Glass and Hardware employs 75 people. We've been in business for 23 years. And now, and thank God, because I'm 60 years old, I've been able to step back and to do some of the things that are important in my life, like giving back to the community and volunteering and being a mentor in the Women Who Succeed program. And I, and I really value that time that I have. So this is my family. That's my husband, Thomas. And my 23-year-old daughter, Haley, is on the right. And my crazy 18-year-old daughter is on the left. Um, Haley graduated from the U last May. And she got her degree in environmental and sustainability studies and is a barista. So go figure that. Anna. Uh, at 18 years old, when she graduated from high school last year, we all had milestones. Haley graduated from college, Hannah graduated from high school, and I turned 60, all in May of last year. So May was a really pretty, it was a pretty big year for us last year. Um, she has absolutely no desire to go to school. And she is a barista at Beans and Brew at the airport. So if you ever go anywhere, go to Beans and Brew, ask for Hannah and say, I know your mom. <laughs> um, but you know, I respect her decision not to go to college because I lived it and it was, it wasn't a choice for me and it wasn't an option for me. And then when I did go, I quit. So I totally respect her decision not to go and I'll do everything I can to help both of them succeed in whatever path they take in their future careers. But I really hope that you all have families that support your decisions on how you want to do well, on the direction that you guys want to go in your education, it's really important to have people standing behind you in your decision. And this happens to be, we went to Africa in September, and that was a picture of us in our Jeep on one of our safaris. And it was, it was an incredible trip. So anyway, each of you is going down a path in your education journey, maybe one that is expected by your family maybe one that is your choice. Your future can be very scary, but it can also be very exciting. Oh, hey, Sid. Oh, thank you. Um, maybe everything's planned out. Maybe you haven't thought about your future education. And maybe you're just thinking about getting through that next final, getting through that next test or midterm, whatever. But whatever the scenarios are for you guys, there are choices and it's okay if you're someone that doesn't know what you want to do in your profession right this very minute. It's okay to question the path that you want to take or not to do the same thing as your friends. I mean, I, you know, I, I think you guys are old enough where you're not going to do what your friends do. You're not going to say, oh, my friends, my friend Sydney is going to be a doctor. So I want to be a doctor too. I think you're all mature enough and old enough that you, you follow your gut and think, you know, this is for me or this is not for me. And you have to try different things too. And, and I, yeah, I'll talk about that later because I can go down rabbit holes on that one. It's okay to question the path you want to take, but just don't do what other people expect you to do. Do the things that you want to do. 
And so I, I loved this little slide because don't you hate it when people ask, so what are you going to do when you get out of school? It's a common question. You don't want to lie, you, but you don't, don't also want them to think that you don't know what you're doing. And then you have this pressure on you that you don't, you know, it's like, I don't, I don't know what I want to do. And it's okay. It's okay to say, I have no idea. It's okay to say, I'm exploring my options. But if you do know what you want to do, if you already know that you have a special talent, you guys are, you guys are too young. I, I always use these really old people that you probably don't know about, but I wish that I had Barbara Streisand's voice because then I, I would know what I wanted to do when I was little. I would be a singer. I would be this famous singer. Or if I was a prodigy piano player, if I played some crazy musical instrument, I would know what I want to do. And maybe some of you already know what you want to do. You, you excel in math. And so you're going to be an engineer. Hello, Kayona. <laughs> but it, but it's okay if you, if you know what you want to do, I applaud you and congratulations. But if you don't know what you want to do, it's okay. You have lots of time to figure it out. So I have a couple of questions. What does your future look like today from your perspective? Do you want to go all the way in school? Do you want to get your master's? Do you want to get a PhD? Do you want to serve your community and do service projects? give back, sit on a board for the homeless community, or maybe do you want to, uh, to serve your community by doing a church call and going on a mission for your, for your, um, for your church? Do you want to move and maybe live out of state for a while or even move to a different country? Do you want to get married? Do you want to have children? Do you want to travel a lot before you finally settle down? Do you see yourself owning your own business? Or maybe you want to be a CEO. There are so many choices for you. You guys are so primed to do anything and everything you want to do. And if you don't know the answer to any of those questions, congratulations. Life changes quickly. And so do your opinions and your feelings. And so don't feel like you have to make decisions now or even in the next couple of years. You have so much time to live and explore and find out who you are. And what makes you happy? There's been a lot of opportunity for growth this year in school and in the Women Who Succeed program. I hope you all were able to attend and participate in the Girls Give Back event. I really can't imagine feeling scared about not having period products available to me. And I never had that issue growing up. And I certainly hope that none of you have ever experienced wondering how you're going to take care of your personal needs. Um, but everything that you guys did when putting these period packets together went to a home, a teen shelter, which I service and, and I'm very, very involved in, and then also to a reservation. And so I hope that you experience through the Women Who Succeed program a lot of give back and a lot of personal growth and understanding either how much you have or what you want to do when, as far as giving back to your community. Um, you've met a quite a few women that are going through the same emotions and experiences as you, and I hope you've made new friends. I hope that you've, through some of the activities that you've been forced to do to be in this, in this program, I hope that you guys have made friends. You've also met some really really powerful mentors that have accomplished great strides in their own careers and that have been a positive influence on you. But still, some of you are going through issues that you feel no one understands and you're having a hard time even seeing what your future looks like. If you find yourself feeling this way, please reach out to someone. I was talking earlier about Instagram and how a lot of the things that you see on social media and Instagram, they're just not real. These women that have filters, they're, they're bots. They're not real. It is not real life. And I hope that you see that for what it is. And if I would have had social media when I was in high school, I don't know that I'd be in the same position that I was in today. 
you guys had a lot more challenges that we did back when I was in high school. You know, we had landlines and we'd call each other on the phone. And if the line was busy, you had to wait and call back. And mm -hmm. you guys have never experienced anything like that. Mm -hmm. And, and the bullying that happens, there was bullying that happened in my day, but the bullying doesn't stop when school ends. And I certainly hope that if you've been through it, that you've had some people to that have reinforced how important you are and, and how important your life is. And if you find that you have questions about your future and am I worth it, that you talk to people, that you have people in your lives. Again, your mentors are there for you if you will reach out and talk to them. And if, I hope that you have people in your life that you feel like you can be honest with about the feelings and the emotions that you're going through. Um, and I've tried to read up on things like uh, how exercise, how things, how things can help your mental health state and exercise always, there are two things that always come to mind or that are always brought up in, in articles that I read. Exercise, it stimulates endorphins and serotonin to help you sleep better and to help you feel better and, and just it, it elevates your mood. But then service is another one. Giving back to people that are less fortunate than you, going to going and serving a meal somewhere um, also allows you to see that maybe maybe my life isn't so bad. But those are the two factors that I have read over and over in mental health articles that help people get out from under the, the doom and gloom of my life really isn't worth anything. So if you know someone that you know can't see forward to what their future holds, please share with someone that you trust so that you can get the help that you need or that you can get the help from your friend. So I don't want to, I don't want to repeat too much what um, Emily talked about with goals because she did such a, a killer job. As my 18 year old would say, Emily, you slayed. So, and I, and I know that everybody knows that and I still am trying to wrap my head around it. But, and I know that you all work through this in your workbook class this month for April, um, but setting both short-term and long-term goals, setting SMART goals, Set goals that motivate you, writing your goals down and putting them in a place that you can see, adjust your goals as necessary and recognize and reward yourself when you meet a goal. Man, if you, if you write down a goal and you meet a goal, go do something with a friend and really celebrate the fact that you accomplished something that, that gave you growth and that put you into a different place. Really pat yourself on the back when you, when you meet these goals. You may have a goal to get a summer job. You might have an awesome goal to just hang out at Lagoon all week, all summer long and not do anything but hang out on the lazy river and get a tan with sunscreen, of course, because yeah, I'm a mother. <laughs> um, setting goals is a great way to plan and work towards things that are important to you. Writing your goals down will help you remember the goal and you can look at it to remind yourself to stay on track setting soft deadlines instead of really hard, you know, I'm, it, I think, I think if you set goals that are too far in the future, you sort of get bored with them and then you just dismiss them and they kind of go away. Um, I mean, I don't know, imagine yourself looking back a couple of years ago, thinking about this goal. And maybe some of you even have them written down. If you were to look back at a goal that you set two years ago, did you accomplish it? And is it silly now or did it help you grow? And, and keeping those goals in a journal or keeping them somewhere so that you can look back at them and see the growth that you felt by achieving that goal or why you may have given up on the goal. It, I think it helps you remember, well, why did I even create this goal to begin with? So there are a lot of reasons for creating goals and and, and then looking back and being able to see the growth that you achieved from it. So whatever you have planned or not planned, it's okay. 
This is the time in your life to explore what you love, what you are good at, and to try new things. Put yourself out there and take a chance on you. Trying something scary is scary, but when you do it, you realize it wasn't as bad as you thought. It was going it is as bad as you thought it was going to be. And now you know you can do scary things that help you grow as a person. So I want to share a story. Um, I have a I have what I call as a mentor. She's she's a mentor from a distance. Um, but her career didn't turn out the way that she expected it to be. So I went to an event where Sarah Blakely, the founder of Sphinx, was speaking. So can everybody just sort of raise their hand if you know what Spanx are? Okay, well, if you don't know what Spanx are, let me tell you. Spanx are like the olden day um, girdles where it takes away, it, it helps smooth out your body and you put, you can like tuck them up, clear up to your chest and it, it kind of takes all those rolls and it sucks it in so you can't breathe for a while while you're going to a function and they can go down to your knees and she's got she's got shirts that cover your bras and 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 it's they're pretty funny but how she started was that she had $5000 in her savings account she was um selling fax machines door to door in Florida and is pretty hot in Florida. So apparently she wore a lot of white pants and she kept struggling trying to um, find like panties that wouldn't show through her white pants. And she went from department store to department store and she ended up not being able to find anything. So she started buying pantyhose and she would cut them out and she would sew them and she ended up creating this undergarment that would hide everything. So you, when you saw the white pants, yeah, that's all you saw were the white pants. You didn't see the thong, you didn't see black underwear, you didn't see panty lines. And she was 29 years old when she created Spanx. And now she, sold, she recently sold her business for $1.2 billion. So she also, was sort of an unintentional entrepreneur. And I, she's got, she's on Instagram and she's extremely inspirational. I, I absolutely suggest that you follow Sarah Blakely. She's got this little coffee cup. She does this every, I don't know how often she does it every week or every month, but she's got these coffee cups that are made and she has these inspirational thoughts that are written on the coffee cups. And you can go look her up and you'll see a plethora of coffee cups that are just really motivating and inspirational. And she's super supportive of women and women-owned businesses. And she's really someone that is, is just a great mentor and, and, and someone to look up to. So I, I find her to be somebody that I, I think is, is an accidental entrepreneur, like I said before, and just someone that sort of she needed to solve a problem for herself and she did. And who knows where you could be. Most of you are either in your 20s or going or going into your 20s. And think about it. She was 29. It's not very far from your age. So it's been a year of change and growth for you all. Hopefully having a mentor this year has been valuable to your success with your education and learning how to balance some of the issues that you've been faced with. I hope you've made new friends that you'll keep in touch with, and I hope you stay in contact with your mentor. I really hope that my mentees reach out to me if they ever need anything. I'm a crybaby, and in some of my meetings with my mentees, I just boo-hoo, and I'm going to miss them, and I'm so excited for their futures but I would really love to stay in touch with them and answer any questions they have. And so I really hope that you have that same connection with your mentors and that you're able to stick to stay in touch with them and just reach out if you ever have any questions. Um, I mean, they're women, they're invaluable and they'll be there for you if you ask. Your future is full of exciting opportunities and I hope you can embrace everything that comes at you with the attitude that it's all a learning opportunity and a chance for growth. 
There will be difficult choices and situations that come up both personally and in your career. You will most certainly be sidelined once, twice, or more for personal and family issues or uncertainty professionally. Emily is a great example of that. It's important to allow yourself to fail and to fall. You can't learn lessons and have growth if you're perfect and nobody is perfect. Looking back, I've learned so much in my life through failure and a few bad decisions, but I wouldn't trade them for the growth that I attained. Even today, I still feel like I've learned something new every time I allow myself to be vulnerable to a new experience. And even women who succeed, I learn something all the time. I mean, sitting and talking to you guys, I was super nervous tonight and I shouldn't be. Um, I mean, I'm, I've, I've been a lot of places. I've done a lot of things, but it's important to me that I represent who I am and what I do and everything that's happened in my life in a really honest and organic way so that you feel a connection with me. And so my, the nervousness that came from me tonight was about displaying my honesty and my vulnerability to you as 20 year olds to a 60 year old that you're important to me and you are important to this program and that you count and you're important to your families and to your friends. So I leave you with these thoughts. Always look out for you. Embrace how different you are from others. Be kind to yourself, be kind to everyone, and know that this world is a better place because you are in it. And that's all she wrote. So does anybody have any questions or comments? <laughs> no. Someone think of some questions because I got to uh, make the drawing board. So stall for me, please. Someone ask some good questions. <laughs> you know, I do have to say one thing that somebody asked Emily a question about how did you know? And I have learned later in my life to follow my gut instinct and I don't even think that your gut instinct happens to you later in life. I think that all of you know when something is wrong or a decision that doesn't feel good in your gut. And so I would tell all of you to follow your gut and listen to yourself. And if it doesn't feel good and if it doesn't feel right, then don't, then maybe don't follow that path. But on the other hand, I also said, uh, somebody asked me in the previous seg uh, segment, um, you know, wh what career, how do I know which career to choose? And again, I've done a million things. And so I had to check boxes that were, no, not that. I did not like that. I didn't do a good job at that. It is not for me. So you also have to, even though you follow your gut, you also have to try new things in order to know what you don't like in life. Awesome. Did you see the question in the chat from Tamariah? I did not. Okay. So she said, how do you overcome the fear of failure and the anxiety throughout the process? Oh, hell. Sorry. No curse words. Oh, my goodness. Um, The fear of failure is with everyone in everything that is new to them. And you have to push through it. You have to take a deep breath. And if you, if you suck at it, if you didn't do a good job at it, then you learn the next time and you are able to reflect back on what you might have not done right. But most of the time, you're going to do fine you're going to, you're going to do fine, but everyone has anxiety and everything that they do that is new. Everyone is scared of the unknown. And so I guess my answer is, 
you're going to have anxiety, but do it anyway, because you will learn from it. You will learn something from it. And so do it anyway. Just take a deep breath, plug your nose and jump in. Awesome. I love that. Okay. One more question for you. What strategies do you use to keep up with people when you're so busy? I, you know, <laughs> I, I don't have a personal assistant and Erin Trenbeth Murray and I all often talk about the fact that we manage our own schedules and make mistakes on our calendars and just trying to navigate what we're supposed to do every single day and remembering what we're supposed to do. But I think that keeping a good calendar is a really good strategy. One of my mentees, her name's McKenna Rogers, and man, this girl has like 87 calendars and I actually relied on her for a couple of things. I think keeping a really good calendar and writing things down is an important strategy to making sure that you show up to the things you've committed to and keeping those commitments and not backing out, I guess. And I don't want to, I don't want to eat up too much time from the giveaway, but doing what you say you're going to do. So if someone asks you, Hey, can you commit to this? You put it on your calendar and you really don't want to go. You got to go. You have to keep your commitments to people. It's, it's disappointing and then you're not considered to be a reliable person anymore. And so I, I really feel strongly about keeping, keeping up with people when you're so busy is that only commit to what you can commit to. Always have a calendar. And before you commit to anyone, look at that calendar to make sure that there's not a conflict. And then put it in your calendar right then and show up every time. Perfect. Thank you so much, Jenny and Emily, both. This was such a great workshop. And I say this at the end of every workshop, but I hope you gals recognize how impactful and, and what a unique opportunity this is that you have every month to listen to such incredible, accomplished, inspiring women um, multiple times throughout this program. And, and every single month we get new speakers, new topics, new uh, pieces of advice and, and anecdotes and things like that. So I'm just so grateful that both of you took the time to, to spend your evening with us. Um, so thank you, thank you, thank you again. Um, so grateful both of you were able to come. And thank you for sharing uh, your awesome stories, your advice, everything with us. It means a lot to me and it means a lot to the girls as well. So uh, thanks again. With that being said, it's finally time for my giveaway. And I really hope it lives up to the hype because I'm really good at hyping things up and I don't actually know if people will like them. So let's go. All right. So I made this little um, wheel of names based on everyone who filled out the attendance form. It's so cute. So we have three things to give away. Um, the first one is an entree to the old spaghetti factory. If you've ever been, you know that that's a pretty killer deal because it's expensive. So our winner for this da, 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 is Lily. Is Lily still on? I think I saw. Hi. <laughs> yes. yes, she's here. Okay, I will email you and make sure that I know where to send it. Thank uh, you so much. Yeah, congratulations. Thank okay. you. Next one, we have a $10 Maverick gift card. So this can be used for getting gas and then for whatever else is in all their stations. So let's see. Brinley, is Brinley still on? Yeah, I'm here. Yay. Okay, Brinley, same thing. I'll email you. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So our last one is a Shields gift card. Oop, there it is. It's worth $20. So this is our last one for the night. Oh, <laughs> it's Avery. I think Avery's on. I am on, I'm right here. 
Wow. Congratulations. Your first <laughs> workshop you've ever been to and you won something. That's amazing. Uh, I guess I'm just real lucky. Really lucky. Okay. <laughs> Congrats, everyone. Um, and also, thank you to everyone else for coming. It was so good to see you all. And I hope to see you at the wrap up event um, on, in May, at the end of May. And also, once again, the winner of the $1,000 scholarship, I'm going to email you personally in the morning. Um, whoever that is, I haven't decided, I haven't picked the person yet. I'm going to do the same thing with little spinny wheel. So I don't have anything to do with it. But, um, Great to see you all. Have a great night. Thanks for being here. Thanks again to Emily and Jenny. And we will see you at the wrap-up event next month. Thanks, everyone.